Welcome to the Framingham Public Access Corporation 2020 Annual Meeting. My name is Phil Ryman. So without further ado, here's the agenda. What we always do is talk about AFTV highlights and we've also have a, something from uh, FEC highlights. So take it, Scott. All right, so the first one will be the AFTV year in review. Hello, the AFTV and FEC TV staff don't want you to feel as though you're alone. While we are separate, we're together. We're all working from home to keep you informed. We are with you. We are with you. We are with you. We are with you. We're with you. We are with you. We're with you. We are with you. We are with you. Like me, you're looking for a greener community. And if you're looking for an event to find people with like minded ideas, you're not. King Fire is an artist from Cambridge. Framingham's second city council was elected November 5th, 2019. Framingham voters elected seven new city councilors and four. This is Inspiring Careers with your host, Ingrid Centurion. We're gonna talk about fascinating technologies that will impact your future. Bill, thank you for having me back. Let me tell the audience a little bit about yourself. As a guest, you live in Southboro with your wife, But as usual, before we get into supply chain management and we talk about what we are going to be doing, let's start with a little bit of laughter. So we... Uh, in an era that none of us really imagined we'd be living through, uh, and Marie and I and all of our colleagues in the House and the Senate uh, want to know what you expect. Uno de los eventos más grandes que se han llevado a cabo este año es el Elliot Awards, que son los premios Elliot. Hi everyone, my name is Danielle and I am from Two Life Communities Fitness and Wellness Department. Today I'm going to teach you a seated... some stories that happened maybe a few weeks ago, uh, but they're worth mentioning either way. Hi, welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director Thank of Thank you. Thank you for taking time to commune with us in this thy holy temple. Thank you for hearing our praise. Eu saúdo a todos com a paz do Senhor Jesus. History. Historic places like this connect us to our heritage and help us understand our past, appreciate our triumphs, and learn from our mistakes.
Flyers lead by four, 27-23. You're watching Flyers basketball on FEC TV. coming up next on Flyer News. All that and more up next on Flyer News Remote. So Phil, go back to the uh, slides and we'll keep it moving. Again, like most every year, I bring up the, the mission statement of uh, Access Framingham so we don't forget why we're here. And that is to engage and serve and enrich the community but by developing programming by and for the people of Framingham. And also to facilitate the exchange of ideas and information through tradition and new media. So talking about this past year, some of the new capabilities is Studio B. So Studio B is now set up to do broadcasting capabilities. As soon as uh, COVID-19 gets, runs its course, we get back in the studio. Uh, interesting thing about uh, broadcasting is that, broadcasting rather, is that it gives you a different audience, much different audience than what you see on the, on the channel. Um, the other interesting part about it is that you can take for the, producers here. You can take a show and do some modifications to the front and back end of the show, actually take the content of that show and turn it into a podcast. So we're, we're expecting to have some uh, pretty good heavy use of that facility. On the Framingham School District, I mean, we continue to have a great relationship with, with, uh, with the Framingham School District. Uh, we just signed a three-year agreement with those guys again. This is the second one. Uh, expanded the summer camp. And again, this was interesting. It was uh, from two weeks to four weeks. Uh, there were 30 uh, mid school, middle school students there. And it was all done via Zoom. And I understand it went pretty well. The other interesting thing about it is that the middle school video equipment now will be reflecting the same equipment that the students used at the summer camp. So when the new equipment gets to the middle schools, there's a, there should be a built-in uh, class ready to use it and we expect great things from that. And again, this year we filmed the uh, high school graduation. 
we had to do it because of uh, COVID. We had to do it from afar, as you saw in the previous video. Um, but it went well, and we had several comments from uh, grandparents that I really appreciate it because of the restricted uh, attendance at the meetings, at the graduation. New programming, I always like to highlight the new programming. I mean, we have the standards of, of uh, Fan to Fan and Travelers with Jack, uh, New England Uncut is another one. I mean, there's a lot of shows that become standards now. So here are some of the newer ones. The Mayor's Community Hour live. And that again is Zoom. And it's actually the, the Mayor Spicer and some of the city officials talking about the city and then interacting with the residents through the, through the chat process of, with Zoom. The um, next one is Portuguese, so I can't even pr pr pronounce it, but I understand the translation is announcing the eternal gospel. So it's a religious, religious a new religious show in, uh, in Portuguese. Frank and Mary is, is, a, is a really a great program. It comes out of um, uh, Callahan Center. Sit down and I talk about things that are items or that are interested to uh, the senior citizens. Uh, the one I overlooked there was the fitness classes by U2 Life Communities. That's from the Stillman House. Uh, and again, it's uh, low impact exercises and calisthenics and stretches for, for senior citizens. The next one I can't pronounce again. Um, Translation is We Are Your World. It's a magazine style show focused on social services. And then Sunday worship is the Episcopal Church and the Lutheran Church got together because of COVID-19 and said, hey, we need to be able to broadcast to our attendees. So that's happening there. In the future, what we're considering is expanding the editing facility. And I know that we've been thinking about that for a long time, but we're actually in the process of talking to the architects at this point. Because if you've been in the station, you've seen that the editing facility is nothing is, is not much bigger than a good sized closet. Um, so we have the uh, the opportunity to. Um, take over about 138 square feet from the neighbor. Um, and make it a good sized editing room, but more than that, also make it a multi purpose room so we can have meetings in there. You can have uh, uh, screenings of, of new programs in there, etc. So I think it's a great deal. And, and again, what better time to do some construction when um, the, the station is not fully uh, occupied? Next thing that AFT is, is uh, considering is a community news and events program. Uh, this is something we've had various people have given us requests that, hey, we'd like to have more current news. You know, with the, with the newspaper getting thinner and thinner by day by day, uh, we need the ability to know what's going on with our community. So the idea between community news and events program is something that shows it not daily than every other day to keep people up to date as to what's happening within the Framingham community. In process, well, I should, in process, mass donations, I had a board member that says, you know, we should be buying masks to, be able to give to our, our members and to anybody else that wants them. So we have done that, as you can see, and they are available at the station. The other thing is that we're looking at, or is in process actually, is the annual report brochure. And this, this comes from the station, our AFTV does so much. And it's hard to, unless you're there on a day-to-day -day basis, it's really hard to put your arms around it. I mean, even, even with the, the great video by Shaversa did a while ago, uh, you still don't get all of the, all, all the feel for what happens, or what support that AFTV is giving to the Framingham uh, community. So, the board decided let's put this thing in, into some sort of a brochure or, or a report that shows exactly everything that that uh, AFTV does, and what we're looking for is a is a brochure that that is 
well done to the point where you can leave it on your coffee table. And then when people pick up, pick it up and look at it, you know, and to see all the things that are happening and all the support that the AFTV is giving Framingham, um, you can be very proudly say, yeah, I know. I, I'm a proud member of uh, AFTV and it will include the numbers and the, and the programs we've done and uh, some financial information also. Any uh, questions before I move further? Somebody said the brochure looks great. I won't name names unless they give me permission. Mama, can you see the slides now or no? Yes, yes, I, I can see the slide. Framingham Public Access Corporation Finances. As you all know, we are an independent 501c3 nonprofit corporation. We do not get any Framingham tax support. Uh, we manage the public access and educational education access television studios. And, uh, well, uh, just a comparison of the revenues between 2019 and 2020, you can see that uh, have been growing a little bit. And I think this is primarily because uh, the rates of the cable companies have gone up. And as a consequence, uh, we get a proportional share of, uh, of, their, of their profits. Our current uh, uh, revenues are 532,200. On the balance sheet, uh, we have an operating cash of uh, 671,400 as compared to 364. You know, the reason for that increment is primarily because last year we could not spend uh, the monies that were allocated in the budget because of unavailability of equipment, et cetera. And this year we have not been able to spend any money because starting uh, February, March, we, we were pretty much uh, in this uh, COVID uh, epidemic. So the money is in the bank. So that's where the operating cash has, has increased. The facilities reserves are our capital reserves. Uh, this is the money that we can spend on our capital equipment. Pretty much remains the same. Our investment CDs are pretty much the same. And uh, so we have a total uh, cash subtotal of uh, uh, 1,266,876. The next line item, which is called the franchise fees due, this is the amount of money that uh, we get uh, on a uh, scheduled basis, uh, you know, from the city of uh, Framingham. This, this, is, this is the money that, that the cable companies give to the city and then the city transfers the money, money to us. So that money is, uh, is currently, uh, it's an invoice that is uh, pending. We expect that money pretty soon. Fixed assets, uh, you can see we, we have uh, pretty much not changed that much between last year and this year, except for the depreciation, which has gone up primarily because uh, we, we now have that, uh, the new studio in place and all the equipment that goes with it and takes a little more depreciation. So essentially we have a total asset base of $1,696,037. Um, which, is, uh, which is a good number. On the liability side, we have um, a payables of 78,510 this year as compared to 6135 last year. Uh, this is primarily because we, we uh, we got some money from, from the federal government as part of the PPP. We, we hope that we will, that will be made into a grant, but as of now, we're still carrying that as a payable account, as a long-term liability. So we have total assets, we have total liabilities, and you can see our net equity is 1,670,527. Our expenses uh, have really not gone up that much uh, because it's all primarily staff, consultants, facilities, and some other operating expenses, which are about 421,243. 
So that's about a picture of the, um, of the financial numbers. And um, as the treasurer of the corporation, uh, my uh, conclusion is that uh, the, the corporation, uh, the finances of the corporation are stable. However, we are keeping an eye on this uh, uh, COVID epidemic to see whether what will happen to the revenues of the cable companies, because if the revenues of the cable companies decrease, our revenues will decrease. The board has had several discussions in this regard, and we are trying to manage the finances uh, of this corporation in uh, making sure that our financial infrastructure is stable. We also had completed the audit. Uh, the, uh, the, our auditors are uh, Borgatti and Harrison, and uh, they basically concluded that uh, in their opinion, the financial statements uh, present fairly in all material aspects the financial position of the Framingham Access Corporation, and that our assets and net cash flow and functional exp uh, expenses are in accordance with the accounting principles generally accepted in the United States. That's a very positive statement. So all in all, uh, we, the, the finances are in a stable situation. Thank you, Mabu. Scott, I believe you're next. First of all, thank you, Mahmoud, and uh, thank you again for your service as the treasurer. And it's been a, a pleasure working with you and, um, and keeping the organization sound financially, especially under the current circumstances. So I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> as usual, I, I always do this every year. I just first want to welcome everybody. Thank you for taking the time out to actually participate in our annual meeting because uh, it's important uh, to us that we share what we're doing. But in any event, these are the people who um, are behind, for those of you who don't know, uh, the work at Access Framingham and Framingham Education Channel. Uh, and they're the ones who make it work, as I do every year. I want to acknowledge uh, the AFTV and FEC staff because they're the ones who do all the hard work to make, make us successful. Um, and they're the first point of contact when anybody comes to uh, either Access Framingham or to the FEC studios, and they do an incredible job of representing us in a professional manner. So I just want everybody to know that. I also want to thank the board um, for their service because, again, it's a volunteer board, and I truly appreciate the time you guys put in as well as working with you to keep the organization in the direction that we like uh, that we know will benefit uh, Framingham as a community. So as you can see, um, you know, we have uh, 111 individual members and nine organization members. And uh, that's down since COVID, meaning the organization members, which is understandable, but we do continue to support those uh, organizations uh, in, in the face of COVID because their operations have changed and they have updated information Lydia Fair, our production associate, she's worked to actually keep that updated as to what businesses are closed or open, as well as uh, sharing information from different organizations in the community bulletin board, along with uh, Megan as well. Um, and so we're hoping that we can increase those numbers. I always think that's the organizations, the NPOs, nonprofits that can benefit from us uh, the most, uh, along with the individual members. So. Uh, hopefully they'll learn more about us and they'll get engaged. Uh, as Phil mentioned, there are 26 member shows, uh, and then we have four member-sponsored shows. And sponsored shows are the ones that members have an interest in and they've come across, and they truly believe it should be shared with the community and the outside world. Um, and so they choose those programs and then, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as members sponsor those programs. Um, Obviously, pre-COVID, and, and uh, you know, we had 110 visits for editing and 157 guests for shows. And I always like pointing out the guests for shows because people like Audrey and, and other studio uh, programs, uh, you know, bring in guests, and those guests are coming to AFTV for the first time. 
And I know that when I uh, met them or engaged with them, they shared that they had no idea um, that this existed, that Access Framium existed and how amazing the studio is and how great it is to have, uh, you know, the resource that is available to them. I do want to share with you some of the uh, things that we uh, created as a result of COVID. Uh, the first thing was really the live on screen crawl because there was so much information going or coming out of the city. Uh, that's when we said, okay, this is, this is an emergency situation here. Let's uh, let people know anybody going by the channel uh, and live streaming on the website uh, will get this information throughout the day and it gets updated um, and uh, it comes from the city and then edited and uh, Glenn has been great in, in getting that set up on a technical level. It does roll over live programming. Uh, and so if there's any, uh, any um, updated information and then we share that and it comes from, as you can see, City of Framingham, the state, as well as the health department. Um, another way is the mayor's community hour, which he actually did do prior to uh, COVID. And um, I actually went to one uh, but as far as broadcasting, you know, I said to her, we would love to actually, uh, you know, share that with the community, even though it's going to be Zoom uh, based, we can actually take that feed and get it on the air. So that too is now scheduled. And they mentioned us in their press release when they put it out to let people know that they can, if they can't access it on the computer, they can certainly watch it on television. So that happens on Tuesdays uh, at five o'clock. Um, that's another way that, you know, the mayor has been uh, supported in getting out information. I know we have the government channel is separate, but I always believe that the community as a whole and the city as a whole will actually benefit if we all are sharing information across the different channels. Um, because I think we have different audiences and there's some overlap, but overall, the more it can be shared with the entire community, the better. Um, so... The other way is the uh, community bulletin board. And the community bulletin board was a way, uh, there was a lot of activity with people trying to share their information with us as a channel. And um, one of the quick and easy ways, uh, but yet effective, was to provide this information via the community bulletin board. Um, and so again, we worked hard to take that information and get it up as soon as it comes in uh, so that the community can be aware of those events and or the change in hours or if people were closed. Uh, Lydia worked with uh, Patch who put out an open or closed business uh, list and we would take that list and also run that on the channel uh, so that small businesses would have support from uh, Access Framingham to be able to uh, let people know that they were open or if they were closed um, and then uh, if there was any protocols they needed to follow. All right, moving on, member-produced programs. This was talked about a little earlier. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, this is the backbone of community programming, okay? Uh, these, these programs are based on people who are committed to sharing their ideas, committed to sharing uh, what's going on in the community. And I applaud every one of you for your efforts and, and um, for your commitment to be, you know, civic-minded and support and share your interests with the rest of the community, because I do believe uh, it strengthens the community quite a bit. Um, we, again, did Beyond the Beat uh, episodes, uh, which, you know, we morphed from Framingham Public, I'm sorry, from the Framingham Beat uh, due to a, you know, a, what I'll call a lack of uh, uh, resources to continue it with volunteers and interns and staff. Um, but we will work in the future to actually uh, do a more updated version. And when I say updated, simply mean current version of uh, Framingham Beat. In the meantime, uh, Frank Morello has worked to lead the charge and coordination for Beyond the Beat. Um, and uh, those are multiple segments that are produced. If you haven't seen the show or you're new to Access Framingham, um, that's, that's the show that runs uh, as a news magazine sort of show, but now is segments that are events occurring in and around uh, Framingham. Uh, and I thank all the volunteers and members that assist with Frank. Um, and, and, you know, a shout out to every one of you that contributes to Beyond the Beat. And then we had 34 uh, location specials. And that's significant simply because in the Beat, it's a two to three minute 
uh, overview of what occurred at an event uh, in, in the community, um, but some of them warrant a much longer uh, attention and they have much more content that we also share as special runs on the channel uh, on the program schedule. Um, but these are, and now I'll go quickly through these three slides, these are the types of programs that are being covered um, and have been covered uh, by Beyond the Beat throughout Framingham. Um, and as you can see, there are quite a few. But most importantly, I always like this, this showing because it's so diverse and there are so many different things happening in Framingham. And um, it's, it's great to bring that to the community. So no matter what your interest is, there's something for you is the bottom line. And if there isn't, then you might have something that isn't uh, being shared here. And we're here to help you get that onto the channel as well and share with the Framingham community. Um, these are the special programming community events that occurred. Obviously um, that has come to, I don't wanna call it a screeching halt, but certainly the break, breaks were applied pretty solid. Um, <laughs> and um, you know everybody is Zooming and we do, actually uh, take the Zoom programs, uh, throw some graphics on them and create content as a result of them. But this is obviously 2019, uh, the fourth quarter to uh, this uh, fourth quarter uh, of, of 2020. Um, social media has increased um, over the year. We have you know 1,100 subscribers and followers. Uh, via Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and Twitter. Um, that'll also be uh, continued to um, develop. Um, there's been some great feedback from the board uh, about the volume and the type of, of content to be shared and, and, and sort of the frequency. Uh, so that'll be implemented as well. Um, but each year we've gradually increased um, and we just started really about a year and a half ago uh, as far as uh, really focusing simultaneously with everything else on social media because there are so many platforms at this point. Moving over to the Framingham Education Channel, uh, and this is the shout out to Michael Goodman and Corinne Palmer and their work. Um, Dr. Tremblay said, the superintendent of the Framingham Public School said he was gonna make it, but then he realized he had a, a conflict with the webinar this evening. So he sent along a quote, and this will also be included in the report. Um, and I'm just gonna read it real quick, even though you guys can read it, it's nice to hear out loud. Uh, I'm so appreciative of the partnership that our school district enjoys with Access Framingham. Since my appointment as superintendent in 2017, I feel that our relationship has grown stronger each year with opportunities for students to learn from industry professionals and increased interactions and communication within the community through cable and streaming services. I couldn't ask for a better community partner um, and that's very significant because, uh, you know, we've worked, and again, kudos to Michael and, and, and Corinne and the rest of the team to continue that relationship because Bill Rapkin started it and, um, and you know, we, we value it and we continue to try and grow it. Um, and, and we've been able to do that, even though there's been changes within the school department, uh, we've continued to facilitate that relationship and it, it's paying off. Uh, by quotes like that and obviously opportunities uh, that are presented to us that we're able to take advantage of. Um, here's the uh, programming that was done and how it's done. Obviously, you see State of the City live stream and City Council meetings live stream. So, you know, there have been restructuring as a you know, school committee and government uh, have, have changed. Um, but what we've done is adapted. Um, and these are just some of the programs as we continue to cover from the school. Uh, and this is what's occurred throughout, you know, even like I said earlier with the Framingham Public Schools, we worked with them as it related to the COVID messages. We did, you know, last minute we're asked to actually broadcast the graduation and, you know, we pulled that off in a, you know, what I'll call, I guess it was about a 24 hour period of notice because uh, it was eventually, it was initially just going to be a live stream, and then uh, that we because they couldn't have the larger attendance that they were planning on due to the spike and or increase in COVID, uh, we were asked to broadcast it for those who weren't going to be able to make it. And so, again, I commend the staff for working hard for us to get that on the air. These are a couple of new shows that came out. Uh, I put Remote Flyer News per Michael simply because they continue doing Flyer News, the Emmy Award winning show that they do at the school remotely. So we worked with them so that we could distribute it and get it on the air. And a couple of the uh, Framingham Public School administrators uh, developed their own shows, uh, 
Play, Learn, and Grow Education, and then Celebrity Series was done by, I believe it was administrative staff in the uh, uh, drama department. And um, obviously we developed COVID PSAs with them. And then there's the Explorer Enrichment Program that was uh, also created remotely. Uh, Phil alluded to this earlier, so I won't spend much time, but middle school training workshops uh, were created and we did those remotely. They started out on the ground uh, physically and then moved to remote. Uh, and um, <clears throat> excuse me, Frank took a lead on that as well uh, to support uh, Michael and uh, Corinne. Uh, and then we worked with them. They'll have new equipment in the fall as well that I've recently ordered. Um, and uh, the summer camp program, as, as Phil alluded to, was very successful. It obviously took a little bit to get to you know, the remote part of it, but I think it was a great success. There's been great feedback um, and they're happy with our performance and support. Again, every year I show you all the community organizations that we've worked with over the, the previous months and or year, um, and we continue to do that. And like I said, it would be great if we can get more uh, community organizations, but these partners are awesome and they do a lot for the community. And I love that we facilitate the information and events that they're providing for everybody because they cover so many, especially in the climate today, they cover so many needs uh, throughout the community. And I just feel like we're, uh, you know, we're, we're um, very lucky to have this type of uh, facilitation. It's, it's great to produce programming to facilitate that communications, but it's also great that we can make their situation better by getting and reaching into the community and their constituents. So I thank all of you for your work and, um, and for looking at us as a valuable resource to communicate with your constituencies. As far as accomplishments, uh, once again, uh, Phil talked to the podcast studio, but uh, one of the new uh, uh, technologies that we have in and we've started using and working with and continue to work with. And right up until uh, COVID, we were making great progress and pretty excited about it. Um, the uh, broadcast picks uh, voice activated technology, which again is speaking to some of the feedback from members who shared that uh, the production can take a long time uh, and that they can't get a crew and that staff may not be available for their, for their um, particular time that they have a guest. And so the, the idea here is to be able to be going to Studio B, uh, turn on the lights, turn on the equipment, uh, mic up your guest, and begin your production uh, solo with a, a staff supporter. But overall, you won't need three camera people. Uh, you won't need a graphics and audio person. Uh, and or even teleprompter, you'll be able to do that as well. So that was the goal there. And so we're pretty excited. And unfortunately, uh, we're now in a holding pattern for that. These are some of the challenges. And I, you know, I call them accomplishments as well, because they started out at challenges. And as you can see where there's a strike through or check mark, um, you know, we succeeded in obviously uh, uh, getting those agreements and, and uh, contracts. Uh, I, I do want to shout out to the Cable Advisory Committee in particular, because any of the contracts that you see here uh, that are checked off uh, was the work of the Cable Advisory Committee. Also another volunteer organization, I'm sorry, uh, uh, board that is working on behalf of Framingham citizens and the city of Framingham, as well as peg stations. And I want to applaud each and every one of them because they successfully secured HD and ele electronic program guide with RCN. And I also want to employ RCN in case they're listening <laughs> um, for uh, providing this uh, opportunity for us has been one of the biggest battles for a very long time because the value is, is that um, you know, viewers who turn into a peg station don't get the same quality that they would for a commercial station. And, um, you know, it's, it's providing the same and accessible uh, quality of media uh, should be applied to PEG as it is for any of the other networks. And that's part of the Cable, uh, uh, the cable Act. Uh, and then moving forward, uh, you know, Phil mentioned we're going to try and expand the uh, editing facility. We're in that process and we'll have to 
you know, evaluate when that happens in, in, in light of the climate, as, as Mahmoud alluded to. Uh, we haven't seen the revenues um, from Q2 and Q3. Um, I've always used that as my uh, metric. I want to see what the revenue drop was from the COVID situation. Uh, and then we'll have a better sense of what our budget is going to look like. While we do have reserves, um, you know, the what I'll call the frugal and, and pragmatic thing to do is wait to see how much of a change, what percentage of revenues have changed um, moving forward. And then we'll have a better sense of what that looks like uh, in, the, in the months or quarters ahead. Uh, community news program, I mentioned earlier, that, that would be sort of an updated Framingham beat. That would be a, you know, a separate, what I would call within the organization, a team that will go out and shoot events, uh, have an anchor and a writer that will spend their time creating that program uh, so that it is more current and people will tune in to learn, uh, you know, uh, I would say within 24 to 48 hours of what occurred to get what's going on in Framingham and get that information. And then community engagement is always the, um, the focus and the goal. Um, and, you know, we continue to do that in a myriad of ways. <laughs> and that goes to, you know, attending events and conferences in the, in, in the community, uh, networking at roundtable and or, uh, you know, I participated, for instance, in the Leadership Academy. Um, and, you know, I, that engagement allowed me to branch out and, and contact many other people who now know about Access Framingham. Um, and some have actually come in and used our facilities. Some have become members and will continue to do that. Thank you. All right, I'd like to, to um, call out the, the directors. Terry, Terry Banerjee is the vice president. Amu Attar is the treasurer. Mark Ainscow is the, is the clerk. Shushil Vegeta, Sean Cox, Nelly Gonzalez, Audrey Hall and Lindsay Morris. So we have we have three openings this year, three board seats that are open as, as we do every year. Uh, the, the terms are a three year term. The bylaws say you can have two three year terms and then you're on your way. You're you're Sarnar at that point. Um, so Audrey Hall has had what has finished a three year term. She's uh, decided to go for another three years. Lindsay Morse had a one, two one-year terms. He was filling in for other candidates, so now he's applying for a three-year term. And Christopher Tika, I'm, I know I'm killing your name, Christopher. I apologize. No worries. It's T. Is uh, also applying for a three-year term. So I, I would like the the board members or the the three candidates to give a brief, you know, three minutes or so introduction of yourself. Chris, you want to start off with that? Sure. Um, I think I'm unmuted. Yes, I just wanted to double check. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Chris Teague. Um, thank you for allowing me the chance to, to speak tonight and for considering my candidacy for the board. I've worked in the legal field um, for the over 20 years, first as a practicing attorney and then as a law school administrator. For the last eight years, I've been working at Boston College Law School where I oversee JD career advising and programming. Um, I've held leadership roles in several professional organizations, both regional and national, and I've served on several nonprofit boards, including eight years as president of a nonprofit theater company in Cambridge. Um, my husband and I moved to Framingham eight years ago. Our three children attend Framingham Public Schools, and uh, over the last eight years, we've really fallen in love with the community as we've put down roots and gotten involved. Um, I've been looking to become more active and to serve on a board where I can uh, make a difference and utilize my skills. So much of my professional life over the last decade has been focused on using technology to make connections between people and to help others make those connections. The current health crisis obviously has made that hard for all of us. And um, I really believe organizations like Access Framingham um, will play an even more vital role in helping schools, businesses, and um, all of us to stay connected. So um, I have been looking for uh, a board that where I thought, I think I can add value. Um, I hope that my skills and background in the arts, education and operations, um, providing professional development and organizational guidance, my legal background, uh, my track record of collaboration and teamwork, 
Um, all of those, I think, give me a unique set of skills that I hope would benefit Access Framingham. Um, I really do think uh, Access Framingham is an outstanding resource. And despite all of our current challenges um, that we're facing, I think the station is uniquely positioned to thrive and become an even more critical resource for Framingham. So I, I'm hoping that I get to be a part of that and hope you will uh, vote for me. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Audrey, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Um, good evening, everyone. I think I know most of you, but uh, for those who I may not, I'm Audrey Hall. I'm a current board member of uh, AFTV, for, uh, and I'm up for re-election. I actually worked in the cable television industry for 15 years uh, and ended my career in cable as the general manager for what it, you now know as Comcast for the state of Massachusetts. Uh, at the time that I managed it for the state, it was owned by Cablevision. Um, I am a communications mm -hmm. professional. I've had a very robust career in media, having worked in radio, TV, cable, the advertising agency business, and public relations. And I'm currently a strategic communications consultant. And for the past 20 years, I know that sounds like a lot, but it is true. I have VHS tapes to prove it. Um, I have produced and hosted the Audrey Hall Show. I, wow. um, yeah, I was which appointed. Is, which is on right now. <laughs> is it? Oh, yeah. You're on opposite yourself. <laughs> um, I was appointed uh, just about two years ago by Senator Spilka to the Massachusetts Commission on the Status of Women, where I serve as the chair of the Budget and Personnel Committee. And in Framingham, I was appointed by Mayor Spicer to the Council on Aging, where I serve as the clerk, clerk and chair of the COVID-19 Impact Committee. So I guess what you can see is that I'm always finding ways to engage and provide help where it's needed and where it's beneficial to the public using the, my skills uh, as best I can uh, to make things better for the people that are served. And as I reflect on my expiring term on the board of directors, I'm proud to have served as vice president and as chair of the marketing committee, uh, which undertook an extensive research study in 2018. And now it's time to update that information and create a strategic plan that takes us forward in this new normal. Uh, we have to be flexible and look for new ways to provide more vital services to the community using technology and making our technology more available and more accessible to residents. And that may mean more training for staff and members, and it may also mean retooling and building more awareness so that more people engage and utilize what we have to offer, which is a lot. And I plan to focus my attention on these efforts going forward if I am able to serve another term. Uh, I ask for your votes so that I can help AFT reformulate and really reposition for the duration of this pandemic, um, for the post-pandemic era, and for the industry changes that may be upon us that might impact the way that public access is funded in the future. Um, I do hope that all of you as members will stay active and dedicated to what we do because it's so important to the community. And I would appreciate your support uh, going forward so that I can continue my work on the board. So thank you very much. Thank you, Audrey. Lindsay. Uh, thank you, Phil. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Lindsay Morris. Um, my background is slightly different than the other two candidates. Uh, I came on board, I think, uh, two years ago, if it was, if I'm not correct, Phil, to fill a, a vacancy. Correct. Um, so I'm a small business owner in Framingham. I've had my uh, insurance agency since 1989 in downtown Framingham. And uh, my focus here at the station, re it really revolves around getting businesses more involved and to try to grow that relationship at, the, at AFTV. Uh, I am uh, a past uh, chairman of the Small Business Council of the Chamber. I, 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 I was a board of directors there for many years, um, past president of Framingham Rotary Club, and um, again, I think what Phil and I tried to accomplish this year was to try to make slight inroads in the business community. We talked about developing a sponsorship opportunity, and I think there's a lot of growth potential in that area. And certainly if I continue as a director uh, at Framingham Public Access, that would be one of my concentrations. So I do appreciate the opportunity, and um, I think that would be it for me. Thank you, Lindsay. Okay. Uh, one thing I was amiss while ago, I need to ask if there's any floor nominations for, for uh, board candidates. If there is, please speak up. 
and move that nomination to be closed. Do I have a second on that? I'll second it. All right. Um, do I have another nomination? I mean, we have three openings. We have three candidates, right? We can go through the voting process or we can do it. Uh, I think we did this last two years, actually. Uh, take a nomination from the floor to accept the uh, candidates as uh, presented. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we that we uh, accept the slate as nominated. I second that. Okay, all in favor? I can't see you, so you're going to have to wave or say hi or something. Hi. Hi. All right, hi. Hi. <laughs> all, right. all opposed? Please be vocal. All right, the motion has been made and accepted and passed. So congratulations, Audrey, Lindsay, and Christopher. You're now the new board members of uh, AFTV. Okay, I'm gonna turn it back over to, uh, to Scott at this point. And congratulations to all three of you and uh, look forward to working with you moving forward. It's exciting. Um, so what we do next, uh, we do this every year, we choose a member volunteer of the year. Um, and it's the Bill Rapkin uh, Award. The, the purpose of it is to recognize a member who is uh, not only a volunteer, but somebody who contributes and supports and works throughout the community, as well as uh, works on other productions and supports other uh, members in their productions, as well as staff and, um, you know, shows that initiative because that's what Bill Rapkin as president did um, and continues to do as a member. And so ironically enough, as we looked into, you know, who, who's somebody that we uh, can say we want to work, we want to acknowledge, uh, who may not have been acknowledged before. And in, in this case, uh, the irony is uh, that it is, uh, well, let me just show you the video. How's that? <laughs> That'll be more fun. I don't know if you're still here, but I do want to congratulate you. And <clears throat> I promise you uh, that we will send you your plaque and you will be added to your, uh, your award. But um, I just want to say truly appreciate your efforts in all that you do, um, your consciousness or conscientiousness, I should say, as it relates to sharing information with us and actually turning us on to new technologies and new resources. One of the things that Frank shared was that, um, you know, you are the type of person who shows up everywhere. When we're producing Beyond the Beat, if we may have missed something, you actually are the person who will let us know that that event is going on, as so many other members do. But your commitment to the multiple organizations that you service, whether you're directing, whether you're editing, um, you rarely say no. And um, I think you, I, I being a new person back then when they named 
uh, the uh, member volunteer of the, war, uh, of the year award after you. I didn't have that history, but I can tell you my experience has been, now I know why they named it after you. So I do wanna congratulate you uh, and thank you for your efforts and continued support, both on the cable advisory board, the transition that you uh, made as, as it relates to the facility uh, that we're currently in right now, your continued commitment to make sure that uh, Access Framingham is known throughout the community, the partnerships that you've developed uh, with the, the respective organizations that you do work with, uh, and we can't do it without you. It's been a pleasure, uh, you know, you and I talking, you and I figuring things out, um, you know, helping with contracts and reading and, and history and all of those things are a great value. And I just think that, you know, right now you're very deserving of your own award. <laughs> so kudos to you and thank you for all your hard work. Well, thank you all staff and board and other members. Um, and now I got to get back to editing. <laughs> How appropriate. <laughs> Very appropriate. Yeah, I mean, it could be more appropriate. Oh, that's great. So now we will move on to how you can get in touch with us, uh, how you can share with your community. Some of you may have this information. We didn't talk about Gallery at Access Framingham, which is now uh, closed, <laughs> but they are changing the exhibits that occur throughout the year. Um, and then there's also, uh, you know, a Facebook page, Twitter. Uh, you can email us as usual or visit our website. And I'll turn it over to Phil. Um, and there's one thing I do want to share. Uh, as Phil wraps up his term as president, uh, he was president when I arrived. Uh, he has led the board since I've been there. Uh, the relationship has been a great one. Uh, he's been a great mentor. He's been a great therapist. Uh, he's been a great mediator. Uh, he's a sales guy through and through. So, you know, he, <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a creative guy and he's more of a sales guy. So it's, it's very interesting to, to look at the same thing differently. Uh, but it's been a great pleasure learning from you, Phil. Uh, you know, I think that you've done an amazing job. You've shown what uh, community commitment is all about. Uh, you took it all very serious. Uh, just so if people don't know, Phil and I met every Wednesday, um, every week. Um, and that's how we would keep connected. And, and you know, he would listen, I would listen, uh, and then we'd figure out things together uh, and move things forward as best we could under, uh, you know, uh, under the challenges that, that we face on a daily basis, especially as an executive director uh, from industry-wide all the way down to community and organization and being a, a manager, et cetera. So all of your skills have been greatly appreciated. Your, your leadership, your kindness, your patience, your uh, focus, uh, your time, most of all, uh, are greatly appreciated by me personally and I'm sure by others. Uh, so it's been a real pleasure. I know this is only the beginning of a good friendship and relationship, and I want you to know how much I appreciated it. Thank you, Scott. I do appreciate that. And it's, uh, it's been fun. It's, it's, uh, and I have, to bill, I have to blame Bill Rapkin, all right, <laughs> since, since he's the, the warder today, um, for getting me into this. Uh, he says, you should, be, you should come on board. And I go, Bill, I don't even watch, I don't watch much TV. He says, you don't need to watch TV. But, you know, as two ex-IT guys, you would be very interested in what's happening there on the technology. And besides that, it's a great organization. And I have to agree with him. It's, uh, it's, it's been a fun, fun six years. Informative, um, trying sometimes, but that's, that goes with the, with the, uh, the territory, right? Um, but I have to say, we've had a, a little six years, we've had nothing but great board of directors. Uh, it's, it truly is remarkable how people can step up and participate and, and try to get back to the community in which the, the work live or, or play. So 
appreciate the good works and I feel honored and privileged to have spent the last six years being, or last five years actually, being uh, president of the AFTV board and I'm going to miss it. But by law say you got two three-year terms and then Saranora. So it's for me it's Saranora and for everybody else this meeting is officially adjourned. So thank you greatly for coming.